welcome you to the final round of our essay and presentation competition. This is organized by the students of Postgraduate Diploma in Tourism, Economics and Hotel Management and Masters in Tourism, Economics and Hotel Management of University of Colombo under the guidance and visionary of Professor Dr. Surangiri Silva, the coordinator of tourism study programs at University of Colombo. We received quite a lot of essays and presentations from undergraduate students representing various universities and higher educational institutions. But after the evaluation made by our panel members, we could select the best out of the best. I would like to mention all the members of our scientific and evaluation panel who helped us a lot in evaluating all the essays and presentations. First and foremost, Reverend Professor Dr. W. Vimala Ratna, Professor in Economics, University of Colombo. The panel chair, Professor Dr. Suranga Silva, the coordinator of tourism study programs and professor in tourism economics. Deshpanthu Professor Jeeva Niriyal, Professor in Law, University of Colombo. Dr. Mubarak Kaldin, Senior Lecturer at Southeastern University of Sri Lanka. Dr. Himalit Bisilwa, Senior Lecturer at Institute of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo. Dr. Sepali Sudhasingha, Additional Director General and Senior Consultant of Sri Lanka Institute of Development Administration. Dr. Shamni Pereira, Head of Faculty of Management, Sri Lanka Technological Campus. Mr. Gamunu Gunavardhana, Chairman of Winston Group. Ms. Bhakya Mahavitanage, Assistant Director of Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, and Ms. Geeta Anjali Chakravarti, General Manager at Hilton Yala. However, today's session of our top five presenters will be evaluated by Reverend Professor Dr. W. Vimal Ratnathero, Professor in Economics, University of Colombo, Professor Dr. Suranga Silva, the coordinator of tourism study programs and professor in tourism economics, Deshapandu Professor Jeeva Niriyala, Professor in Law, University of Colombo, Dr. Mubarak Kaldin, Senior Lecturer at Southeastern University of Sri Lanka, Dr. Himalidhi Silva, Senior Lecturer at Institute of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo. Dr. Sepali Sudhasingha, Additional Director General and Senior Consultant of Sri Lanka Institute of Development Administration. And Mr. Gamunu Gunavardhana, Chairman of Winston Group. On behalf of the organization committee of our competition, I would like to welcome all of you. So today we are going to witness the final round of the top five students. Prior starting the event, I would like to mention what our winners will be receiving. So the first place will be given a day out package for the family for maximum four members in any Asia leisure hotel. And the second place will be given a day out for maximum two people in any Asia leisure hotel. And I would like to thank and mention our alumni of tourism at University of Colombo for sponsoring for our winners as well. So uh, before starting the final round, I would like to invite our panel chair, Professor Dr. Surang Silva, to speak a few words regarding the competition. Professor, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Damsi. Uh, can you hear me right now? Yes, of course, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, with my great appreciation of all the panel members, uh, Professor Reverend Vimalaratana, Professor in Tourism, uh, Professor in Economics, University of uh, Colombo, and Deshabandu Professor Jeeva Niriyal, the Professor in Law and University of Colombo, and uh, Mr. Gamunu Gurvardhana, the Chairman of the Stone Group. Thank you very much, Mr. Gamunu. And uh, Dr. Sefa Ali Sudhasinghe, Senior Consultant and Additional Director General of Sri Lanka Institute of Tourism Development and Administrations. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sefa Ali. And Dr. Himali Di Silva, Senior Lecturer of Institute of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo. Dr. Mubarak Kalalbi, uh, Senior Lecturer, University of South Southeastern University of Sri Lanka. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mubarak. And uh, then uh, uh, Dr. Uh, all the panel members and including uh, uh, Ms. Geetanjali Chakravarti and uh, 
uh, Ms. Bagia. And in addition, I would like to uh, convey my our sincere thankfulness to the students of masters and to masters and postgraduate diploma in tourism economics and hotel management. More importantly, I want to thank Damsi uh, Dharmardana uh, and and Anandri uh, Sinagaratna and Naudi Karmaratna and uh, I think uh, to other students uh, contribution actually because of your contribution we are very uh, we are in a comfortable situation to organize this event uh, the AC competition and presentation uh, Actually, we, we have a sincere thankfulness. Many of the students who, who applied for this event and presentations. Uh, now we are at the last uh, final event. We have actually selected two of our valuable uh, panel members, five of best students, uh, those who have done good essay competition essays, and the present now we are going to see the best presentations. So for this event, not just the competitions. We thought that it is good time to pay the awareness among our now we yeah, we have selected the 20 out of them, then we have selected the five. Five times would be the can be many disasters. We have to empower our students. I would like to congratulate everybody uh, through the analytical skills and innovative thinking. So wish you all the best, Damsi. Now you can you can start the so valuable good presentation out of the five best students. You would like to see the best out of the best. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Professor. So now we are going to start our competition. Competitors, you will be given 10 minutes to present your presentations. After each of your presentation, our judge board will raise questions from you. Good luck, everyone. And Gayatri, over to you. Thank you, Dancy. Also, we congratulate every student out of many contestants. And finally, it is we have come to the finals of this uh, essay and presentation competition for university and the higher uh, higher educational students under the topic of resilience and recovery of Sri Lankan tourism. We are like who is a student of. University of Kalania to present his presentation. So it's over to you. Shall I start now? Yes, please, Chamindu. Sorry. I didn't hear your purpose. Can I start now? You may start now, Chamindu. It's yours. Okay. Good afternoon. Venerable Tero, ladies and gentlemen, I am Chambu Kavisha from University of Kalani. 
Today, I'm going to talk about the topic for resilience and recovery of Sri Lankan tourism beyond the impacts of COVID-19. Actually, I'm living in Bentota. Bentota is the most finest tourist destination in Sri Lanka. Most of community in my village engage with tourism-related occupations. Nowadays, they're suffering from various problems due to this COVID-19 pandemic. I move to the next slide. So, what is the definition of tourism? According to World Tourism Organization in 1993, tourism encompasses the activities of persons traveling and staying in places outside their usual environment for not more than one consecutive year for leisure, business, and other purposes. Sri Lanka's third largest foreign exchange earning industry is tourism industry. There is no, no doubt that most of employees are engaging with the tourism sector. The main purpose of visiting the country by tourists is to have pleasure. Most of the tourists come to country to engage in various entertaining activities such as uh, visiting beaches, being surfing, boating, jungle trekking for hiking, uh, for climbing, in present over the tourism is uncertain and unstable, like twice our country. And this epidemic have a given on the tourism industry. Before COVID-19, Sri Lanka has been facing unexpected fluctuations in the number of international tourist arrivals due to different kind of political and social issues. Black July insurgency situation in 1983, JVP insurrection youth unrest in 1988 and 1989, the Iran war, the suicide attack to Colombo International Airport in 2001, the ceasefire agreement in 2002, the end of the war, were some of fluctuation facts backward in the tourism industry. By the way, tourism industry was increased, but in 2019, another incident happened. The deadly bomb attack of Sunday, April 21, we called it Easter Sunday attack, shocked the entire island of Sri Lanka. Due to this terrorist attack, most of inbound flights to the country are empty. Cancellation at two operators and hotels are increasing. The government expects a decline in visitors by 30%. That means a loss of about $1.5 billion. I'll move to next slide. After the terrorist attack in Sri Lanka, another tragedy happened to, against the tourism. The tourism sector, which is the third largest foreign income earner of Sri Lanka, has been drastically affected by COVID-19. In fact, major tourism markets of Sri Lanka have been suffering from the pandemic and therefore imposed travel bans for their citizens. The global pandemic, which happened in December last year, affected to most countries' industries, including Sri Lankan tourism industry. As we all know, some even lost their employment because of this deadly virus. The people who solely depend on tourism industry has no choice and they cannot shift another industry because they only engage with this industry. I mean this, they hasn't, they haven't another alternative industries. The unfortunate COVID-19 pandemic closed down the entire sector for nearly four and a half months up to now. More than 500,000 employed with tourism industry and according to the official hotels and restaurants under lockdown and no guests arriving. Employment of tourism industry is at its now. Not only that, Sri Lanka has repeatedly failed to achieve its target of attracting at least 2.5 million visitors yet. As a direct result of COVID-19, tourist arrivals in February declined by 17%. 
the cumulative tourist arrivals in the first two months of the year fell 12%. The impact of COVID-19 on tour Sri Lankan tourism industry cannot be calculated precisely. This difficult task, but the damage is immense and uncountable. This graph will show the fluctuations of tourist arrivals clearly. The first quarter of to, uh, 2020 tourism arrivals decreased when we comparing the year 2019. I move to the next slide. Each and every time the Sri Lankan tourism is affected, the people whose livelihood is based on tourism cannot be left to their fate. When we consider aforementioned factors, it is obvious that we need some solution, policies, and resilience strategies. As Sri Lankans who have managed to control the spread of this pandemic successfully, we should step up and grab the opportunity by preparing new policies and strategies for encouraging the tourism sector. Before implementing the policies, public sector, private sector, tourism agencies, and other institutions have to work with cooperate. If not, developing tourism is cannot do precisely. Sri Lanka has also an opportunity to use this pandemic disaster to convert as a platform to redesign and redirect Sri Lanka tourism and manage with right strategic approach. On the other hand, the government and tourism agencies as well as other institutions can now start developing basics, needs and infrastructure to facilitate travel for foreigners and local tourists. Because at present, a lot of tourist destinations and accommodation hasn't proper accessibility, amenities and so on. The best example is the sea grier. Small and inconvenience due to this COVID-19 pandemic. So, Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority how to protect them, however. And seen also, I mean, I read methods. If it is so, most tourists attract you and come to Sri Lanka for gaining Ayurvedic methods and Ayurvedic treatments. They also like it. And the government should implement new healthcare requirements to improve safety and confidence of both local and tourists. In future campaigns, it would be the best if Sri Lanka can focus on novel experiences and locations. The hotel owners and restaurant owners can offer discounts and do the free packages for tourists. I mean, value added services and promoting flexi services would be another strategy to protect tourism. Most resilient strategy is marketing the tourism. According to that, TV channels and other social medias can implement the strong marketing methods such as advertising and doing promotional campaigns for promoting the industry. Sri Lanka had promoted as one of the safer tourist destination for good health and safety among the other countries in the world. Obviously, there has a possibility to improve and develop the Sri Lankan tourism industry. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Let me give you a summary of what I have been talking about over the last few minutes. Basically, I talk about the Sri Lankan tourism before COVID-19, impacts of COVID-19 on Sri Lankan tourism, and finally, I talk about the effective strategies and policy measures for post-COVID-19 tourism development in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Shamindu. I'd like to quickly brief what he has taught for us. He was taken through us the significance of tourism and important milestones.
I sorry, I I forgot to mute. Thank you, Swanga. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, to unmute and uh, it's a good presentation as uh, i mean the student he has a lot of research uh, uh, my question is uh, you said um, that we Good for our country to uh, engage in uh, various uh, Uh, during these uh, two, three months, uh, do you have any personal experience uh, they are exposed to indigenous uh, medicine for any prevention or any kind of uh, activities during uh, COVID? No, ma'am. Actually, the hotels are also uh, closed, uh, but I think the uh, Morning of my tourist, uh, I will take three months. Uh, you use our media to promote. Uh, yes, sir. The, recently, the Allah tourism, uh, the most of uh, tourists uh, said that the, during pandemic situation, Sri Lanka is the best and the safest place uh, to live uh, for living there. So uh, I mentioned uh, in this. Uh, all right. All right. Thank you very much. Have you do you have the Yes, Kavisha, can you hear me? 
yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, you have done a good job. Hmm? You have all. way people's participation should be there to regain the momentum of lost tourist tourism in sri lanka what do you propose for the community participation in promoting tourism you have identified different different areas okay those are really good but all those um, are part and parcel of the if community is rejecting foreigners in fear of covid-19 or some other issues it would be difficult to promote it how do you win the minds of general public basically the community uh, as i uh, mentioned before uh, the participation the media the social especially facebook uh, youtube and other social medias can uh, give their cooperation to uh, So we need community awareness programs. Otherwise. All the panel members has uh, raised their questions. So let's move. Let's move to our next presenter. Go to our next presenter, Cedric Liam Silva, who is a student of Management and Science University. Cedric, the platform is yours. Very good afternoon to everyone. I uh, hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Can you please yes, uh, share your presentation video? Yeah. And we want you to on your video as well. Okay, you may start now. So. The topic that we'll be talking today is the resilience and recovery of Sri Lanka tourism beyond the impacts of COVID-19. So this is one of the main topics that has been been talking about. I think yesterday as well, there was a, a webinar at MSU. So I think Dr. Suranga and some valuable uh, information also was spoken there. So today's topic, it would be divided into three parts. So first we will be reviewing what, how, what was the situation before all this happened. So moving on to the first slide. So uh, in my, the way I have tried to present the, the situation before COVID-19 is, I have taken a series of the years of the past uh, few years from just, uh, beginning from 2009. So that is right after the war, we can see the tourist arrivals on your left side. 
that is we started at 447,890. So at this moment, this was the verge of a new beginning for Sri Lankan tourism. So moving on to 2013, 2015, we can see a significant increase. And moving on to 2019, we hit a total of 1.9 million. So this being one of the a great achievement for the 2019. So on right on the same screen, we can see like I have I have totally given all the numbers. So if we take the tourist arrivals in 2018, we took a total of 2.3 million. So we can see a small drop between 2018 and 2019 that being due to the unfortunate incidents of April 21st. But if we focus on 2018, so on 2018, we had a direct contribution to the GDP of 4.9%. So as my mom, as Chamidu also explained, uh, the tourism industry being the third largest uh, foreign income earner to the country. So 4.9% is a large impact to the GDP. So if you take the accommodation side, so I'm me being part of the hotel industry. Uh, so the The room occupants are within, within the country, we have achieved an uh, average uh, percentage of 72%. So 72% being uh, for a country like Sri Lanka, it is amazing. So yes, we can do better. And in the future, that is what we plan for. And also uh, going on to total employment generation, 388,000 people have been employed in the tourism industry. This can be direct uh, to the accommodation sector. It can be to the travel agencies, to operators, and even uh, if you take the uh, umbrella uh, effect, it can be to the small vendors, direct and indirect as well. So emphasizing the growth and stability is, uh, to, to the tourism industry in Sri Lanka before the pandemic. So this was our situation uh, before this uh, before January. So currently, I work at Cinema Lakeside Colombo, and if I can tell December, just to emphasize, there was one comment on uh, TripAdvisor saying that the hotel was a train station. It was so busy. Uh, you can take weddings from this side, then uh, the outlets. We had 198 arrivals, 160 departures daily. So that was the situation we were going through in December before the uh, direct impact of the uh, COVID-19. So I have listed uh, in summary some of the impacts that have taken place due to this COVID situation. So the global pandemic has caused the entire country into lockdown. So for the hotel industry we depend most of us we depend on the service charge alone so for december where we we got over 50000 service charge at the city hotels uh, it went down completely to zero and certain companies that were able to give in much alone and then going forth we have zero arrivals for the uh, until june so this is something that we have to understand that like uh, for the hotel industry and for the people who work in the industry, this has caused a large, large impact to people's lives in terms of their income, in terms of expenditures and everything. So the tourism industry, uh, like 
the tourism arrivals is its cost it causes a chain of events to happen uh, to happen so if we say the, in, uh, the occupancy levels decrease then the people's lives from uh, from their basic salaries to the service charge to their loans to their expenditures to uh, family development children's fund things everything like that will be in fact uh, will be affected through this and if you like if you take the reality of the situation even most of the hotels have come to a standstill due to the at least even they can't come up to the breaking break even point of the operational cost of the hotel so if it's like of a good uh, like a stable company such as hilton uh, cinnamon aiken spence yes the the job security is there for a certain time but what about the other people who like to engage who have worked so hard to bring up this tourism industry this is one of the major impacts that has impacted to them the tourism in the industry it has both direct and also indirect uh, impacts like if you take the direct it's directly into the hotels the travel agencies it can be or even attractions destinations and but what about indirect people who work for daily wages uh, people hosting these Uh, attraction sites for them to function. Like if you take L for instance, right? But at the moment, all of it is closed. So people they are. So what about these areas? So these are little uh, to to the tourism industry. So raising the stakes of the financial issues for individuals. Who are mostly focused on daily wages. So tourism guides, national parks, uh, attractions for people to even keep the operation going. It is, has come to a standstill. So uh, the next part of it would be what we can do. What are the effective strategies and policies that we can implement, being part of the tourism industry for future? Like uh, recovering from COVID is not going to be immediate. But we need to look at the reality of it. We need to make more stable decisions in moving forward. So one point that I would like to take is the segmentation targeting positioning. So this was uh, this is part of marketing actually. But if we try to implement this into the development part of it, so we can review the basis of segmentation. So whether it can be location, it can be climate, it can be attraction, it can be purpose for travel. Uh, these little things that we can absorb and we can segment in. It can be even demographic factors of the travelers who we intend to drive down to Sri Lanka. And then targeting, how we evaluate the value of it. Identify its core target and the terms of attracting the customers. And then positioning it means like the uh, taking into account the other factors that can be. So we can uh, do the marketing mix, we can uh, take ch check the pestle factors, all these factors that can be uh, finalized and how we use this, uh, this strategy into uh, attracting more customers and new customers into Sri Lanka. And then second point being using Sri Lanka's natural resources to be special. We are being part of an amazing country. Truly said, there is no other country like Sri Lanka. So, what I mean by natural resources is, we have identified, all this time, we have identified few locations and it has been overused. You take Yala Safari, uh, then you, if you take uh, the Merissa Beach uh, or the Hikadu Corals, these, all these places are common places that every tourist would visit. But what if we can expand our horizons? Like, uh, if you take the Uwe province, there are certain uh, locations such as Madhusima, uh, Namunukula, then Lulugara uh, uh, site, these are places that haven't been exposed to the tourism industry. So moving forward, I would be talking about uh, uh, exploring our untapped destinations as well, but using its natural resources to attract customers, like the Ayurvedic, uh, uh, Ayurvedic part of Sri Lanka. It is an amazing and huge subject that only specialists special can. But what if we use these uh, special things that we can promote and get down people to? Then the third point I will want to talk about is increasing the linkage within the country to mini minimize the leakage.
be very beneficial to the local people. I have been working in the uh, down south area in uh, Eden Resort in Beirut as well as uh, in Kalutan. So when we look around, we can see a lot of people engaging in the tourism industry. So my point being is, what if we can uh, use our local vendors to more, more to a uh, to more extent, like. Uh, Farm, farm to table concept can be used in most cases, not to 100%, but to a majority percentage. If we can use that concept, farm to table, uh, supporting the local vendors uh, in the area, support, supporting local companies. And we have to try to minimize the leakage of, uh, of foreign currencies out of the country. So taking that concept also, we can help minimize and also uh, build up our local communities within the country. And then uh, the third point is I have taken this uh, by looking at cinnamon uh, hotels and resorts, providing special packages to individuals who work at the front line in the war against uh, the uh, uh, COVID-19. So we uh, at cinnamon, we have started a new pledge. It's a, it's a travel pledge actually. So we have given thousand uh, vouchers to the frontline workers of the uh, medical industry in Sri Lanka. So the doctors, nurses who uh, strive to uh, eradicate this uh, disease from Sri Lanka, we have given them complimentary stays for the country. I am taking this not in a complimentary basis, but what if we can design through travel agents, design special packages and offer it to people that uh, they can use in attracting people. And this point, we can use it as a hospitality, not just hospitality, but the Sri Lankan hospitality that is within us. Uh, so providing a great package deal for the frontline workers in, uh, in in the medical industry around the world after the COVID-19 has been taken care of, obviously. But if we can attract this, this would give us a more moral advantage uh, in moving forward with the tourism industry, providing people from all, of the, all other countries a special package for them to travel with their families at uh, special rates as well. So, and the third one is encouraging self-travel uh, for millennials. So we know that uh, this has been uh, a popular market for the backpackers, like uh, people who visit, uh, who travel by train. So these are uh, good packages that we can run. And uh, this is a good time as well for us to target on niche market rather than uh, promoting a mass market, a mass tourism. Because uh, if we, with the current situation, we, we are unable to host uh, large groups, even if it's under 10 or 12, it's a bit hard to attract mass tourism. So what we can do is, what if we can uh, expand our horizons, like uh, agri agriculture tourism, then photographic tourism, Sri Lanka, again, using its natural resources to the to be its greatest strength, we can use the photographic tourism, uh, cultural tourism, and wedding tourism. Wedding tourism is one of the greatest markets that we can explore at the moment. So we have promoted beach weddings, we have promoted city weddings and all this, but what if we can promote mountain weddings, like uh, uh, taking into account uh, special uh, hotels, resorts around the country, uh, towards the hill country, and promoting these uh, packages as well. So these are little few niche markets that we could uh, by the support of the local authorities, the, uh, the personal interest of companies, uh, of uh, travel agents, and if we can uh, get together and make this, I think this uh, this market would be a good market for Sri Lanka. So moving on to the next, it's a good, like I said, it's a good opportunity for us to explore untapped destinations. By, we can attract a large number of tourists, millennials and everyone, and we can disperse them rather than sending all our tourists, promoting the same destinations uh, in, every, uh, in every brochure, in every online page, everything, if we keep promoting the same, uh, uh, same destinations, the same destinations are gonna be overused once again. But what if we can disperse them into directions? Because there are substitutes, like if we take uh, uh, Ravana Falls. Ravana Falls, you just go four kilometers down, you'll find Alavala. Alavala is just, it's even more beautiful than Ravana, Ravana Falls. It's, uh, you get a hike and all these things. So little things that like this, we can help to disperse the crowds and disperse uh, the tourists, attract by also, and without a limit, we can help get more tourists down without any fear. And then customize package to en encourage travel. So a uniqueness of Sri Lanka being within such a small country, 
we can we can provide a vast experience if people go to candy they will candy and anuradhapura kolanaru they will get a more culture but what if they come down to uh, to nore then they will get the full mountain sensation coming down to uh, vellavaya and then uh, gol site all the from gol to direct kalambo all you will find is beaches so all these experiences we can explore more and more and within uh, according to their uh, budgets and according to their time period of stay we can make special packages that give them more attraction so if a guest is like i'm going to stay 5 days so what can i do within 5 days this in our country we can offer you these packages for just 5 days so these uh, little things that will help a person attract and uh, give them more interest into traveling into the country is one of the another part and then uh, exploring new trends and new trends in tourism we can uh, to, like um, like mountain tourism wedding tourism these are uh, like uh, the new underwater museum in gol so this is a new trend that we can promote in sri lanka and uh, little small trends that may go a long way like food tourism uh, things that is unique to us we need to promote it. and then uh, diversifying the experience of exploring uh, sri lanka based on their travel period so these are the few uh, few of the uh, effective strategies that i think uh, would help us other than the more uh, obvious reasons so uh, i would like to thank you for everyone for listening sorry if i extended the time uh, and i'm welcome to answer any of the questions that you have thank you thank you sir as you all know i'll just give a quick uh, brief up and your presentation was so informative and the uh, as we all know the third largest income generator for sri lanka is tourism after uh, the foreign remittances and the apparel industry so it is 4.9% from the total gdp and uh, 2018 our total arrivals the tourist arrivals were 2.3 million and it has dropped a little bit uh, into 1.9 million after the east attack so after this lockdown during the uh, covid-19 situation the country's economy has completely stand still occupancy dropped drastically there are a lot of major direct and indirect outcomes involved in the country due to this pandemic uh with the suggestions and the improvement that you have uh, given to uh, during our presentation encouraging self travels explore untapped destination and tagging uh, targeting the tourism in the niche markets were really highlighted strategies so i would like to open up the forum to the panel me- panel members now you may ask questions from the our contestant gi cedric ilam silva who is a student of management and science university mr cedric can you hear me yes sir well um, you made a good presentation i am really happy um you are highlighting um different types of tourism products and your opinion uh, for the post covid-19 tourism promotion not mass tourism niche tourism uh, mass tourism is not suitable for you similarly when we look at mm, the players in the tourism market mm, you would see uh, micro level players small scale players medium level players and large players uh, your opinion which categories we should promote hmm, in post covid 19 period hmm, which categories should not be promoted yes you can answer Sorry, sir. Can you just repeat the last part of that, please? Which players? Yes. Uh, which players we should promote, and which players we should not promote? Micro, small, medium, large. Say 
three wheel drivers are there micro and uh, see buses are there small and uh, when we go to uh, say trains or public buses medium large huh? which sectors should be promoted which sectors should not be promoted it's an excellent question sir so being a part of the tourism industry and me myself i am being part of the cinnamon group so i would say it's a large a large company but being a sri lankan it is hard to say who is to be promoted who is not to be promoted because if we do our right marketing and if we have our product to market if we have something that and uh, if we promote something and if we, if we can stand by it like before like if we take uh, the last year uh, after april we lost all hopes that people kept saying uh, the country is uh, not safe anymore we do not know when the next attack will happen but having that faith as a sri lankan we were able to come back to almost over 90% of occupancy by december so i believe if we promote our products in a more suitable and uh, more stable manner we can not only uh, stop another one over the other but we can build it all together like uh, if you are going to promote the uh, self travel self travelers mostly they would uh, they would prefer traveling alone or uh, they would use the public transport they would say no i would rather rent a scooter and drive around the country uh, so it's something like that and then if we take uh, a more, a more a couple a couple of guests who are coming through enka travels or some or if they are coming through ekan spence travels then they would say no i want a luxury vehicle for me to travel for all the places from hotel to hotel run so they would also travel around the country uh, and also like uh, let's say they go into an attraction so if they want to find the sri path then what about the vendors there also could be supported through the large companies to the small because uh, this being a very interactive industry i don't believe that each company rather it being big or being small cannot function on its own so we need to build it all together because if a if a guest is promoted an excellent service at the hotel and if he goes into uh, an attraction and he is not hospitable the hospitality is not shown to him to him in that ilankan tourism so in this sense uh, in part of whether it being a minimum number of acting that only the large industry the players should uh, benefit or the small industry players should benefit so slow and steady that we can grow the industry because at once we are not going to attract large number of people it's going to take some time but with the effective strategies i think if we play to our strengths we can also we can help we trust mm -hmm. and if we are going to promote micro level is more would be easy for handling micro is small medium and last covid cluster so take the covid cluster
but if you're talking about the medium to small in beer in tracing so in my sense yeah yes there is a small drop but uh, going forward i think we can find more strategies more effective strategies to fill in that gap Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Jeeva, yourself, we know that you wanted to ask a question. Can you please unmute? Dr. Vimala Ratna, uh, I think your slide number seven, since I'm coming from law background, you're talking about rules and regulations in resilience of Sri Lanka. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, you are, I mean, uh, to, uh, but, but sort of uh, the research really, or I mean, information that you have collected uh, in order to I mean, finalize this particular the slide. There are seven bullet under seven bullet points. You were talking about uh, some uh, the maybe the two years since you are layman. Maybe these policies or strategies, whatever. I mean, in order to come to that type of strategies or policies or rule changes or regulatory changes. Um, but what sort of work you have done? Because I have some doubts there, right? So yeah. what is the work you have done really in order to I mean, prepare this particular slide? So uh, this is in regard uh, to what point, madam, exactly? Uh, this, this is, is your uh, rule, rules and regulations in resilience of Sri Lanka. In slide number seven, I suppose. Yes, slide number seven. You're talking about what are the rules and regulations that we have to either to change or relax in order to have a resilience of, of Sri Lanka. I mean, to me, it's how to open um, Sri Lanka to the tourists after COVID, the post-COVID period, but sort of rules and regulations either to be in consideration or what really you are trying to talk about on the, this particular slide. Um, uh, what are the, I mean, what sort of work you have done to come? You said that the public transportation has been prohibited to this like that. I haven't uh, spoken about anything about rules and regulations in my slides. Yeah. Uh, like uh, two uh, strategies. Uh, there is uh, the segmentation, uh -huh. uh, targeting, and positioning. Uh, then the Sri Lankan uh -huh. natural resources. So, uh, are you referring to that? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I am referring to that. The strategies and policies. What you are trying to say that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so, madam. So basically. What I did before I started was in order to recover, what are the steps that we need to take and what we have done in the past compared to last yeah. year, like uh, what we have done. So last year compared to this year is a totally different subject. Uh, yeah. So I took into account by talking to personal managers at uh, within our companies, my, my bosses in uh, 
previous companies as well and also going through the SIPDA website yeah so oh, okay. uh, so prohibitions uh, madam I haven't I haven't uh, mentioned any of the prohibitions uh, but if if that's a question then I could say that uh, I am asking you what actually we uh, cannot be pro um, prohibit yes that's what my point you can't prohibit any of the person's uh, arrival so then it would be having uh, I mean negative impact on the the I mean travelers therefore what we have to do is just a suggestion only mm -hmm. I think of that but sort of agreement so I mean larger uh, the perspective and a medium perspective this can't be, I mean, done by people like you, but it should be taken by the yeah. government okay. level. Okay, thank you. True. Uh, Mr. True. Sukrit, uh, you yeah. did a good presentation. I, uh, you've been you, talking sir. about the segmentation, targeting, and positioning. I mean, yes, sir. Uh, you know, if you take, especially during the COVID-19 or any pandemic periods, or no matter, uh, maybe it is post-COVID-19, uh, uh, I mean, in your mind, I mean, whom do you think that uh, we would, uh, or they would very suitable uh, segment that we should uh, target? So, Mr. Mubarak, what I was thinking was, uh, rather than like most of the people would say that we target on one on one particular demographic or on one particular segmentation, but what I'm trying to emphasize is. Sri Lanka has so much to offer. Why don't we make a number of segmentations? So, taking into account the niche market, we can make a number of segmentations like uh, self travel uh, to adventure tourism and then culture tourism. And if we take uh, like heritage, uh, Ayurveda. So, uh, taking one segmentation, it would be better to uh, segment the different people and their travel needs, uh, whether it being leisure, it can be casino, it can be uh, like city tourism, any certain things like that. Based Can be based on time period uh, or even device those packages. All idea to that. Yes. Uh, sure. Could happen to all the people who are, I mean, engaged in tourism. Therefore, do you have any, uh, I mean, idea to say that yes, there is now another four to five months, like you know, how uh, you have to set. You know, categorization so, or to give a social media, right? And the people being hospitable, that video alone has 3 million views on Facebook through Project Nightfall page. 0.3 million views if we can reach to one
You are talking about uh, you are also talking about the promoting I read. Eh? Uh, so, so uh, so uh, I read the treatment is something else uh, in this prevention or protection promoting I read is something uh, different uh, than earlier uh, industry field uh, do you have any uh, ideas or suggestions to your company uh, to uh, plan in creative work in support our uh, at the moment We also depend on our in the field of if it's proven that a certain, a certain treatment is Uh, effective with If they can prove it, then madam, I think it would be a niche market that no country has ever seen before. Tourism in the city is perfect for all the other, like. Uh, The street proven is so far, but I think so. At the moment, it's quite hard. Like. just for the Ayurvedic treatments and they are in my mind I was like wow what a good and uh, what an amazing niche market this is to have a guest staying resident in the hotel for one and a half years so uh, if we are able to actually promote medicine for uh, that is uh, approved by our brilliant doctors in the Ayurvedic field then uh, I think we can we can definitely attract more and more niche market uh, in terms of the Ayurvedic medicine to Sri Lanka. Okay, thank you. 
thank you. So I hope all the questions. Uh, uh, now we're moving on to our next contestant, who is uh, MSF Shamin, who is a student from University College of Anuradhapura. So it's over to you, Shamin. Shamin, could you please on your video as well so we can have a nice presentation. One second. Hello, uh, can you see me? Hello, hello, can you yes, speak? Sri Lanka and the strategy in future development of tourism. In 2019, there are 4,47,890 tourist arrivals. When it comes back, when we when we see in the 2018, it was 2.3 million. We could see a huge development in this record. And after the civil war, up in 2019, again, how we expect to bounce back from this devastated situation? Again, 2020, Corona hit hard the tourism. In Sri Lanka. Let's get more into the introduced in the mid March. So after the, the, the travel agencies and all the tourist related places are reduced their workforce and some are terminated their workforce. Tourism is a life substance for many communities, mainly in Sri Lanka. So, because of the lockdown period, those all are affected by the poverty. And also, the Sri Lanka
we know that india is rapidly increasing in the cases of corona and also the second one china china the origin origin company oh sorry origin place where the covid was generated so and also the uk the similar condition so our target so our market is our market is highly damaged and also the decline in revenue according to the asian bank because of the travel ban we have we have we have got the decline in 307 million rupees and let's let's see the effective strategies and the policy measures for the post covid 19 tourism development in sri lanka practicing the advices of united nations world tourism organization and world health organization because the people have believe who follow the stricted stricted guidelines and the guidance of the world tourism organization they are they are providing a good service for the people and effective dialogue between the stakeholders we know that there are so many stakeholders in tourism we cannot say sometimes a people can be a stakeholder a foreign tra foreign traveler and a travel agency in sri lanka and in a foreign travel agency and the leaders and all our stakeholders so if we make a dialogue between marketers entrepreneurs and the leaders who are related in sri tourism we could come up with the new ideas and to find out a new market which we want to target and to segment how we what are the things we are going to provide them so the effective dialogue is very important for the resilience of the tourism in future and long scheme and the funds for the government to improve safety security at a tourist space in future tourism will be in a different manner the people will mainly concern about the safety security of them but due to the lockdown period in most of the attractions we know that when the government need to pro uh but see see the site they offer the promotion for us everyone thinks that all the all countries are affected by the corona and still we are with the corona so when we when we when we came from the corona incidents we need to arrange international travel arrange meeting with international travel media we get to the normal in transportation
happened to where December started in to begin in 1971. We have a lot of and WHO. 